Well, shit. Okay, this should be fine. Then we can go on cycling trips and listen to your podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, today's podcast is uh, featuring sarcastic comments from uh, Siri, quote unquote, cool Johansson. <laughs> Uh, we are continuing uh, Mastering Metrics by uh, two authors whose names I can't remember and don't really care about. Chapter 1. Randomized Trials. Kui Chang King. What happens in a man's life is already written. A man must move through life as his destiny wills. Old man. Yet each is free to live as he chooses. Though they seem opposite, both are true. Kung Fu Pilot. Our path. Our path begins with experimental random assignment, both as a framework for causal questions and as a benchmark by which the result from other methods are judged. We illustrate the awesome power of random assignment through two randomized evaluations of the effects of health insurance. The appendix to this chapter also uses the experimental framework to review the concepts and methods of statistical inference. 1.1. In sickness and in health. Insurance. The, aff the Affordable Care Act, or ACA, has proven to be one of the most controversial and interesting policy innovations we've seen. The ACA requires Americans to buy health insurance with a tax penalty for those who don't voluntarily buy in. The question of the uh, proper role of government in the market for healthcare has many angles. One is the causal effect of health insurance on health. The United, spent, the United States spends more of its GDP on healthcare than do other developed nations, yet Americans are surprisingly unhealthy. For example, Americans are more likely to be overweight and die sooner than their Canadian cousins, who spend only about two-thirds as much on care. America is also unusual among developed uh, countries in having no universal health insurance scheme. Perhaps there's a causal connection here. Elderly Americans are covered by a federal program called Medicare, while some poor Americans, including most single mothers, their children, and many other poor children, are covered by Medicaid. Many of the, uh, many of the working prime-age poor, however, have, been, have long been uninsured. In fact, many uninsured Americans have chosen not to participate in an employer-provided insurance plan. These workers, perhaps correctly, count on hospital emergency departments, which cannot turn them away to address their health care needs. But the emergency department is the best place to treat, say, the flu, or to manage chronic conditions like diabetes and hypertension that are so pervasive among poor Americans. The emergency department is not required to provide long-term care. It, is theref it therefore stands to reason that government-mandated health insurance might yield a health div di dividend. The push for subsidized universal health insurance stems in part from the belief that it does. Lord Mo is really loud right now, and I'm hoping that I'm still audible. If not, well, uh, tough shit, and hopefully you'll be able to hear me in the next chapter. <laughs> the Cateris Paribus question in context uh, contrasts the health of someone with insurance coverage to the health of so the same person were they with insurance other than Im an emergency department backstop. This contrast highlights a fundamental empirical conundrum. People are either insured or not. We don't get to see them both ways, at least not at the same time in exactly the same circumstances. In his celebrated poem, The Road Not Taken, Robert Frost used the metaphor of a crossroads to describe the causal effects of personal choice. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveller long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth. Frost's traveller concludes, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less travelled by, and that has made all the difference. The traveller claims his choice has mattered, but, being only one person, he can't be sure. A later trip or a report by either travellers won't nail it down for him, either. Our narrator might be older and wiser the second time around, while other travellers might have different experiences on the same road. So it is with any choice, including those related to health insurance. Would the uninsured men with heart disease be disease-free if they had insurance? In the novel Light Years, James Salter's uh, irresolute narrator observes, acts demolish their alternatives. That is the paradox. 
We can't know what lies at the end of the road not taken. We can't know, but evidence can be brought to bear on the question. This chapter takes you through some of the evidence related to paths involving health insurance. The starting point is the National Health Interview Survey, the NHIS, an annual survey of the US population with detailed information on health and health insurance. Among many other things, the NHIS asks, would you say your health in general is excellent, very good, good, fair, or poor? We use this question to code an index that assigns five to excellent health and one to poor health in a sample of married 2009 NHIS respondents who may or may not be insured. This index is our outcome, a measure we are interested in studying. The causal relation of interest here is determined by a variable that indicates coverage by private health insurance. We call this variable the treatment, borrowing from the literature on medical trials. Although the treatments we're interested in need not be medical treatments like drugs or surgery. In this context, those with insurance can be thought of as the treatment group. Those without insurance make up the comparison or control group. A good control group reveals the fate of the treated in a counterfactual world where they are not treated. The first row of table 1.1, which I can't read out loud because it would make no sense, but I will attempt to, if this is on a YouTube video, bring a copy of the table for you to view now on screen, compares the average health index of insured and uninsured Americans with statistics tabulated separately for husbands and wives. Those with health insurance are indeed healthier than those without, a gap of about 0.3 in the index for men and 0.4 in the index for women. These are large differences when measured against the standard deviation of the health index, which is about 1. Standard deviations reported in square brackets in Table 1.1 measure variability in data. The chapter appendix reviews the relevant formula. These large gaps might be the health dividend we are looking for. Fruitless and fruitful comparisons. Simple comparisons, such as those at the top of Table 1.1, are often cited as evidence of causal effects. More often than not, however, such comparisons are misleading. Once again, the problem is all other things equal, or lack of thereof. Comparisons of people with and without health insurance are not apples to apples. Such contrasts are apples to oranges, or worse, moldy oranges, say. Among other differences, those with health insurance are better educated and have higher income, and are more likely to be working than the uninsured. This can be seen in panel B of Table 1.1, which reports the average characteristics of NHIS respondents who do and don't have health insurance. Many of the differences in the table are large, for example, a nearly three-year schooling gap. Most are statistically precise enough to rule out the hypothesis that these discrepancies are merely chance findings. See the chapter appendix for a refresher on statistical significance. It won't surprise you to learn that the most variables tabulated here are highly correlated with health, as well as with health insurance status. More educated people, for example, tend to be healthier, as being overrepresented in the insurance group. Pardon, as well as being overrepresented in the insurance group. This may be because more educated people exercise or smoke less and are more likely to wear seat belts. It stands to reason that the difference in health between insured and uninsured NHIS respondents at least past, partly reflects the extra schooling of the insured. Then there's the table, which I will put on the screen. Our effort to understand the causal connection between insurance and health is aided by the fleshing out uh, Frost's two roads metaphor. We use the letter Y as shorthand for health, the outcome variable of interest. To make it clear, when we're talking about specific people, we use subscripts as a standard for names. YI is the health of individual I. Uh, the outcome YI is recorded in our data, but facing the choice of whether to pay for health insurance, the person I has two potential outcomes, only one of which is observed, the one obviously that actually happened. To distinguish one potential outcome from another, we add a second subscript. The road taken without health insurance leads to Y0I, uh, read this as Y0I, which I just did because I'm a bloody genius, for person I. While the road with uh, health insurance leads to Y1I, which you read, unsurprisingly, as Y1I, for person I. Potential outcome lie at, uh, pardon, pardon, potential outcomes lie at the end of each road one might take. The causal effect of insurance on health is the difference between them, written Y1I minus Y0I. 
to nail this down further, considering the story of visiting Massachusetts, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT, student Kazudar Khalat, which I hope I've pronounced correctly, recently arrived from Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan has a national health insurance system that covers all its citizens automatically, though you wouldn't go there just for the health insurance. Arriving in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Sudar is surprised to learn that MIT students must decide whether to opt into the university's health insurance plan, for which MIT levies a hefty fee. Upon reflection, Sudar judges the MIT insurance worth paying for, since he fears upper respiratory infections in chilly New England. Let's say that y0i equals 3 and y1i equals 4, for i equals Ksuda. For him, the causal effect of insurance is one step up on the NHIS scale. And here we have a little formula which says y1i, pardon, y1 uh, Ksuda, because Ksuda is replacing i, minus y0 Ksuda equals 1. Because 4 minus 3 is 1. You should know that if you're going to do a master's degree here in Copenhagen. Then there's table 1.2, which I'm going to put on screen now. It's worth emphasizing that table 1.2 is an imaginary table. Some of the information it describes must remain hidden. Ksuda will either buy insurance, revealing his value of Y1i, or he won't, in which case his Y0i is revealed. Ksuda has walked many a long and dusty road in Kazakhstan, but even he cannot be sure what lies at the end of those not taken. Marina Moreno is also coming to MIT this year. She hails from Chile's Andean Highlands. Little concerned by Boston winters, hearty Maria is not the type to fall sick easily. She therefore passes up the MIT insurance, planning to use her money for travel instead. Because Maria has Y0 Maria equals Y1 Maria equals 5, the causal effect of insurance on her health is Y1 Maria minus Y0 Maria equals 0 i.e. there is no difference between the two. Maria's numbers appear likewise in Table 1.2. Since Xudar and Maria make different insurance choices, they offer an interesting comparison. Xudar's health is y Xudar equals y1 Xudar equals 4, while Maria's is y Maria equals y0 Maria equals 5. Uh, the difference between them is y Xudar minus y Maria equals minus 1. Taken at face value, this quantity, which we must observe, Suggests Sudar's decision to buy insurance is counterproductive. His MIT insurance coverage notwithstanding, insured Sudar's health is worse than uninsured Maria's. In fact, the comparison between frail Sudar and hearty Maria tells us little about the causal effects of their choices. This can be seen by linking observed and potential outcomes as follows. The adjusting formula, which I'm not going to read out loud, and you can see it on the screen now. The second line in this equation is derived by adding and subtracting y0 xudar, thereby generating two hidden comparisons that determine the one we see. The first comparison, y1 xudar minus y0 xudar, is the causal effect of health insurance on xudar, which is equal to 1. The second, y0 xudar uh, minus y0 maria, is the difference between the two students' health status were both to decide against insurance. This term, equal to minus 2, reflects xudar's relative frailty. In the context of our effort to uncover causal effects, the lack of comparability captured by the second term is called selection bias. You might think that selection bias has something to do with our focus on particular individuals instead of gr on groups where perhaps extraneous differences can be expected to average out. But the difficult problem of selection bias carries over to comparisons of groups though. Instead of individual causal effects, our attention shifts to average causal effects. In a group of n people, average causal effects are written average n, square brackets, y1 i minus y0 i, close square brackets, where averaging is done in the usual way, that is, we sum individual outcomes and divide by n. Then there's some formulae. Look, I'm assuming you have a co copy of this, and I'd really recommend that you have it open here, because econometrics is something that, whilst for the explanations of it, I can read aloud, but if you're purely listening to this, you're going to want to look at the formulae, so please look at the formula. Uh, but you don't need me to tell you that, tell you that, because you're not a fucking idiot, and you are, in fact, a very intelligent GD student. Anyway, um, the symbol... Fuck, I don't know what this is called. Uh, it's a Greek letter, okay? For some. If you do any kind of economics, you would have seen it before. It looks like a really weirdly written E. 
um, indicates a sum over everyone from i equals 1 to n, where n is the size of the group over which we are averaging. Note that both summations in equation 1.1 are taken over everybody in the group of interest. The average causal effect of health insurance compares average health in hypothetical scenarios where everybody in the group does and does not have health insurance. As a computational matter, this is the average of individual causal effects like Y1 Xuda minus Y0 Xuda and Y1 Maria minus Y0 Maria for each student in our data. An investigation of the average causal effect of insurance naturally begins by comparing the average health of groups of insured and uninsured people, as in Table 1.1. This comparison is facilitated by the construction of a dummy variable, di, which takes on the values 0 and 1 to indicate insurance status. We can now write uh, average n uh, blah, 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 and stuff for the average among the insured and another formula for the average among the uninsured. These quantities are averages conditional on insurance status. The average yi for the insured is necessarily an average out of outcome y1i, but contains no information about y0i. Likewise, the average yi among the uninsured is an average outcome of y0i, but this average is devoid of information about the corresponding y1i. In other words, the road taken by those with insurance ends with y1i, while the road taken by those without leads to y0i. This, in turn, leads to a simple but important conclusion about the difference in average health by insurance status. Another formula, which I will put on screen. An expression highlighting the fact that the comparisons in Table 1.1 tell us something about potential outcomes, though not necessarily what we want to know. We're after average in Y1i minus uh, Y0i, an average causal effect, effect involving everyone's Y1i and everyone's Y0i. But we see average Y1i only for the insured and average Y0i only for the uninsured. To sharpen our understanding of equation 1.2, it helps uh, to imagine that health insurance makes everyone healthier by a constant amount k. If only it were that simple. As is the custom among our people, we use Greek letters to label such parameters. Ah, uh, it's going to tell me what it is. It's called kappa. Oh, that's k. Well, that's pretty easy. Um, so as to distinguish them from variables or data. The constant effects assumption allows us to write y1i equals y0i plus kappa or equivalently, y1i minus y0i equals kappa. Uh, the other words, kappa, is both the individual and average causal effect of insurance on health. The question at hand is how comparisons, of, uh, how comparisons such as those at the top of table 1.1 relate to kappa. Using the constants effects model, and I'm going to have to start shouting again because the Bloody, I'm not going to record when there's a lawnmower next time, but hey. <laughs> Using the constants effects model, equation 1.3, to substitute for average and yi uh, by di equals 1, in equation 1.2 we have, big formula again, you'll want to look at it on screen, maybe pause it to read through it. This equation reveals that health comparisons between those with and without insurance equal the causal effect of interest k, plus the difference in average y0i between the insured and the uninsured. As in the parable of Xudar and Maria, this uh, second term describes the selection bias. Specifically, the difference in average health by insurance status can be written difference in group means uh, equals average causal effect plus selection bias, where selection bias is defined as the difference in average Y0i between the groups being compared. How do we know that the difference in means by selection, by, sorry, pardon, by insurance status is contaminated by selection bias? We know because Y0i is shorthand for everything about person I related to health other than insurance status. The lower part of Table 1.1 documents important non-insurance differences between the uninsured and the insured, showing that Ceteris isn't Paribus here in many ways. The insured in the NHIS are healthier for all sorts of reasons, including perhaps the causal effects of insurance, but the insurance are also healthier because they are more educated, among other things. To see why this matters, um, imagine a world in which the causal effect of insurance is zero, that is, kappa equals zero. Even in such a world, we should expect insured NHIS respondents to be healthier, simply because they are more educated, richer, and so on. We wrap up this discussion by pointing out the subtle role played by information like that reported in panel B of table 1.1. This panel shows that the groups being compared differ in ways that we can observe. 
as we'll see in the next chapter. If the only source of selection bias is a set of differences and characteristics that we can observe and measure, selection bias is relatively easy to fix. Suppose, for example, that the only source of selection bias in the insurance uh, comparison is education. This bias is eliminated by focusing on samples of people with the same schooling, say, college graduates. Education is the same for insured and uninsured people in such a sample, because it's the same for everyone in the sample. The subtlety in Table 1.1 arises because when observed differences proliferate, so should our suspicions about unobserved differences. The fact that people with and without health insurance differ in many visible ways suggests that even were we to hold observed characteristics fixed, the uninsured would likely differ from the insured in ways that we don't see. After all, the list of variables we can see is part partly fortuitous. In other words, even in a sample consisting of insured and uninsured people with the same education, income and employment status, the insured might have higher values of Y0i. The principal challenge facing masters of metrics is elimination of the selection bias that arises from such unobserved differences. And that's all you need to read for Monday, so I'm going to cut it here at a little picture that says breaking the deadlock, just randomize. And that's what we'll be reading next time. Thanks for listening, and I hope my voice and or lawn lawnmower sound effects were not too shitty, and I will see you next time. Or not, if you actually thought my voice is shitty. <laughs> Laters. <laughs>